Hey, this is OXDF looking at the Hack the Boo CTF uh, from Hack the Box. This is a beginner focused CTF, um, Halloween themed. And today I'm going to look at the day two web challenge name Spookifier, or I guess just Spookifier is the name of the challenge. Um, this challenge comes with a download as well as a um, Docker instance to spawn. So when I spawn the Docker instance, um, I can paste that into Firefox right here. And uh, this is the website I get. I'm actually going to solve this challenge entirely without going into the source code. And then afterwards, we're going to go back into the source code and look at what did we just do. Um, there's nothing on this site that couldn't show up in an easy rated box on Hack the Box. And so it's the kind of thing you might want to be able to recognize without having the source code accessible. Um, so we've got this name Spookifier uh, website. It's got a single form here. So we can come here and put OXDF and get our Spookify name. Uh, I can put in some like I can put in IPSEC. Let's see, it's just, you know, it's printing out the different fonts, spooky fonts. We have cool. Um, often I show running through burp um, just for a little variety. Let's run through, um, we'll, we'll pull up the, the dev tools and we'll look at the network tab. And so we can click on this one right here. We can see the response headers um, coming from the server and it shows a content length, content type date. Um, we also have the server type right here, which is workzerg, uh, which is the Python which is the framework for hosting Python web servers. So we can guess pretty quickly this is probably a Flask server. It could be a Django server. That's probably not complicated enough to need that. Um, could, I guess, be Fast API. I don't know if it uses this or not, um, but something like that. Anytime I see a web server that is running um, Python for sure, maybe a Ruby framework or something like that, something that's using a templating language, um, I'm going to want to check for server-side template injection. And so if we do payload, all the things, SSTI, well, I've searched for this before, and we open this up, it's got a really nice diagram that I always like to work off of right here that tells us um, how to start to test for this. And so the first test is to put in uh, seven times seven in the brackets like that. Let's see if I can make this window slide over. Okay, so if we come over here and we enter in um, dollar sign, open bracket, seven times seven, close bracket. Now, if this is if this prints back that exact string down here, we will know we're not vulnerable. Um, well, we'll know this this type of template injection didn't work. And we'll actually go down here. Um, if it prints back 49, that means that the server took this string and at some point interpreted it as templating language and multiplied that seven times seven and returned the result 49. In fact, that's what we get here. We get 49. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, we've now found templating injection. So let's come up here and try this next one it tells us. Um, so we type a like that comment like that b and see what we get and spookify that and now this comes back not vulnerable. We didn't we just got back literally the same thing we put in. So that's the red arrow down here. Um, now we can try dollar sign z dot join a b close bracket like that and we get Z between A and B. So it's taken the string AB and it's joined it with Z. So this is clearly, again, something that's executing or it's, it's the templating language is being interpreted. And so that tells us we have Mako. Uh, so now, now that we know we have Mako, we can come over here, let's see, and find here's Python Mako. And it tells us right here a bunch of different examples for um, how to get, what we really want to be able to get is access to like the OS module. Because once we have access to the OS module, we get access to the system function to the p open function and different ways to call um, to execute. So if this right here can return, then we know that we will have the ability to run arbitrary commands and ideally to get the results out. So let's paste. I don't know if I just pasted or not. Oop, that's that's an internal server error. Um, let's try grabbing this. Oh, I didn't grab the whole line. All the way to there. OK, let's paste that in and spookify, um, and we get back a zero. The system function doesn't actually return the result. Um, it just prints the result to the screen and then returns a return code. So that's not the most useful thing to us. Um, instead of system, what I like to do is use another thing inside of, uh, inside of the OS module, popen. And if you do popen and then you do .read like this, we'll actually should get back the results of it. And you can see kind of behind this um, thing, I wonder if we can get rid of it, inspect. Um, we deleted it and it's gone. So now we have the result back. We are running as UID root, blah, blah, blah. So we actually have execution here. 
Um, and so we can do the same thing. I probably should have saved that. Oh, we'll come, up here. We'll come right up here and change it. Instead of doing ID, we can do um, ls. I'm going to guess the flag. Well, let's just do ls on the current directory. And we can see, um, make this oops, full screen this so we can see if we can get out from under it. OK, so we have application and run.py. Not where we want, not where we're going to find the flag. Um, it's probably in the root. Um, so if we do ls slash, and we have app bin, there's our flag.txt right there. So we can change this again to cat flag.txt, and we get our flag. So we, we solved it. Um, but wanting to understand what we just did, let's go take a look at the code itself. So um, what I get from this download is um, everything in this directory came out of this web spookifier.zip. Uh, I'm going to run code on this directory to open up VS Code and uh, take a look at the different files. So first thing we'll start with is we'll start with this Docker file. A Docker file is going to define a Docker container. Um, you can see we're going to start with let's turn this up, Python 3.8 Alpine. We're going to do some apt updating. We're going to install Flask and the work zerg. Uh, we're going to copy flag.txt from, you know, from outside into the root of the directory, which is where we found it. Um, we're going to make the app app. We're going to change into it. We're going to copy the challenge stuff into it. We're going to copy the supervisory d.com file into Etsy supervisory d. Um, we're going to expose a port and eventually we're going to run supervisory d. Um, we can look at that comp file and see that it is just going to run um, Python app run.py and it's running it as root. So if we come up here to this is the run.py right here in the app directory, um, it is importing from application.main import app and then it's running that thing. So application.main means let's check the application folder in the main directory or main python main.py and then we're going to look for something called app which is this object right here um, which is a flask object um, and it's using mako templates so that's the same thing we found out through our enumeration um, and it's registering a blueprint route for the for the route for the uh, home route and so we can see that that is called web, and we can see that's read from application.blueprint.routes.py is importing the web object. And so we will, oh, if I can click, let's see, go to routes.py, and we can see here it's calling, um, it's going to take, so if there's if there's an args.get text, it's going to take it and convert it via the spookify function and then return this render template. Otherwise, it's going to return the template without it. Um, so we want to look at the spookify function, which comes from application utilities import spookify. So here's application util, or, and here we go. So we have the spookify function right down here at the bottom. Oops. And it's going to pass the text into change font, and it's going to return that. Um, change font is going to, whoa, be careful about my clicks here. Um, Effectively, it's going to loop over each of these and add these to a list and pass it there. Um, generate render is the interesting function here because this, if we look up here, is taking in some HTML and substituting, well, I don't know why it's jumping over like that, um, formatting the converted font stuff into here, and then it's calling this template result render function. And anytime you start rendering text that includes user input, that's where you're at risk of um, a server-side template injection. So um, because the text isn't cleaned here and it gets passed to this render function, that's where it gets rendered. And that render can take my, you know, dollar sign squiggly bracket and execute that as template code. So um, we found it here as well. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for sticking around with me till the end, and uh, I appreciate your eyes, and I'll talk to you next time.